Welcome back right here in Mass listeners. I'm honored to have David Tortola as today's guest. David is one of only 190 certified reverse mortgage professionals nationwide and has been educating retirees on all aspects of reverse mortgages since 2005. He specializes exclusively in reverse mortgage finance and is passionate about educating retirees on the main applications that this unique financial tool has to offer. He currently resides in Situate with his wife and their daughter. Outside of work, David enjoys sports, outdoor activities, working out, and most importantly, spending time with his family. Dave, thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, thanks for having me, Ashley. Congrats on your new business venture. Thank you. I would love if you could share with our listeners what you do and what led you there. Yeah, well, uh, I entered the mortgage industry back in 2002. And back then was just doing traditional mortgages, home equity lines, all you know, all the different flavor mortgages, VA, FHA, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac. And it was around 2004 when I attended a, a, um, a seminar strictly on reverse mortgages. And it was always an intriguing concept to me, but I always had these preconceived notions in my head, obviously, like most people do. Well, what really is it? You know, so I attended that and I was very interested and I originated my first reverse mortgage in 2005 for a family in Dorchester and the rest is history. You know, basically what happened was, is I, I began learning about it, Ashley. And what I found was that it's really more of a financial tool. Um, and so to me, that was more of a niche. It was more interesting to me uh, from a consultative approach. Traditional mortgages, I mean, we all know what those are, right? They're, basically, it's a commodity. We all, most of us need one when we buy a house. We're not afraid of it. We put money down and we take a mortgage out. But this was different. This was something that was actually put in place by our federal government, HUD, which is Housing and Urban Development, and FHA, Federal Housing Administration, around the late 80s. And they, they loved the concept because the concept has actually been around since the 60s and 70s. It's just in those decades, they were unregulated. So they weren't as safe as they are today. So, you know, I started seeing what this does for families and I made a decision to around 2008 to just switch over entirely to reverse mortgages. And really I would say that, why did I do that? You know, I had to step back income wise because I'm only working with age 62 and above, but I just, I found that, you know, it was a product where I could actually help make a big difference in someone's life. You know, the, the other mortgages, we all get them and yeah, our, our, our clients might call us, but I just found this to be so, so much more fulfilling. So that's kind of what led me here. And you had mentioned that you switched to focusing on reverse mortgages in 2008. What was that like with the recession happening at that time as you're making this transition in your career? Yeah, that was, you know, that was challenging. Uh, we had our daughter in 2000, um, 2007, actually. So, and my wife wasn't working. Uh, 300 banks were going out of business. So things were a little bit uncertain back then. And I had just made the transition over to reverse mortgages. So it was uncertain, but I, I, I just, I had a lot of faith in the product. And since it was federally insured and backed, I knew there was an enormous need mm -hmm. for people 62 and older. Um, you know, just a few stats. I mean, there's 10,000 people every single day turning age 65 for the next 10 or 15 years. That's an enormous amount of people. And the fact of the matter is we're, they're all living longer, right? So if they don't have a significant amount of savings put aside and they live 25 years after retirement, the home becomes an asset class that's now considered. So it allows people 62 and older to look at the equity in their house and say, hey, I can draw money from this in, in this fashion. So um, it was challenging. I, you know, I'm not going to lie. It was challenging. But here I am 17 years later. And it was, you know, it's the best decision I've ever made. I've had many jobs and many careers. Uh, I worked in software, hardware, uh, computer hardware sales, telecommunications. And I never really was passionate about the corporate you know, structure. I always came home at night. My wife is sort of like, or I said to my wife, I said, I just don't adapt well, hon, to that corporate environment. Am I a nonconformist or is something wrong with me? And, 
I just, I just said to myself, no, I kind of wanted to run my own deal, right? I wanted to be in control yeah. of me. And this is an industry much like you, you're an entrepreneur. Um, this is an industry where, you know, you don't get paid a salary, right? So you are employed by a company or a lender or a bank when you do mortgages or reverse mortgages, but you're commission based. So you're building a business really around your reputation and, you know, developing partnerships with real estate agents and certified financial planners and CPAs and all those different professions. And so uh, many, many years later, I have a solid network in place now where I get a lot of business via that. I do a lot of speaking at uh, senior centers. I do some radio, live radio spots with uh, financial planning firms. So it's and I'm only licensed in Mass and in Florida. So, mm. but there's enough business. There's a lot right. of people turning age 62. So there's an enormous amount of business. And with $10.6 trillion of unused equity lying in homes owned by people 62 and older nationwide, and 10,000 of them turning 65 every day, the potential is there. And this will be a mainstream product. It's going to take another five to 10 years, in my opinion. It, it's, you know, I'm 55. So I think when my generation turns 62, we'll either just do a reverse mortgage or we won't based on our circumstances. We won't be as afraid, you know, from the old days and stigmas that were attached from the old days. So it's, it, I, I love what I do. I'm very passionate about help, helping the older generation. And I, I don't really even feel like I work, to be honest with you. It's a, it's a great feeling to help our, our retirees. Yeah. And being only one of a handful of CRMPs in Massachusetts, how does that, or what does that mean for both you and your clients being one of the very few in the state? Yeah. So the CRMP designation was put in place about 12 years ago by the National Reverse Mortgage Lenders Association. You know, with all the stigmas and preconceived notions out there, the National Reverse Mortgage Lenders Association said, geez, you know, how can we create a pool of individuals that would be considered the gold standard? And the whole reason behind that was, as a consumer 62 and older, where can we steer them to so that they're, they're in good hands? Meaning the people in this pool, this very small pool, 190 nationwide that have the CRMP status, um, they're vetted out annually. Me, I'm vetted out annually by the National Reverse Mortgage Lenders Association. Initially, when if you wanted to get that designation, you had to be in the business a minimum of three years so that you have some you know, experience in the industry. You had to have closed uh, 25 reverse mortgage transactions. Those are just criteria you need to meet before you can even apply to be a certified reverse mortgage professional. Once you meet that criteria, now you're being vetted out by the National Reverse Mortgage Lenders Association. There's a committee that basically oversees this designation program, and they wrote up the curriculum and the uh, code of ethics that we adhere to every year. We sign a, a you know a three-page code of ethics policy that we swear to, and we pay money to maintain the CRMP. We do eight hours a year of continuing it to maintain it, but. What it is really primarily it's for, if you're a senior, you're 62 and older looking into a reverse, if you simply go to, if you have a computer, simply go to Google and do local CRMP near me, um, there aren't a lot of us, but that will actually put you in the right hands. Meaning right. that person will, we're trained to talk about all the alternatives to a reverse mortgage, not just go into the household and sell the product. But talk about other things like maybe selling is a better option for that senior and or that family. Maybe staying and doing a traditional mortgage might be a better fit, depends on their circumstances. So we just, it doesn't mean that someone's not certified, Ashley, that they're not a good person or they know what they're doing. It's just, it's like anything in life, right? So you can be a PhD, you can have your master's, your bachelor's. Does the PhD automatically mean that person's better than the person with the bachelor's? It doesn't. It's just a, it's just the highest level in our industry. And so there is significance there because when you sit down with people and they say to you, David, why you and not someone else? Well, it, it means a lot to them, especially the older right. generation. They want to work with someone who's certified, right? They want to work with someone who's been doing this a long time. They want to work with someone who 
only does this for a living and not does other things. So my focus is just this. So there's, there's significance there and I'm proud to have it. And I, I've had mine now for eight years. So I, I was one of the early ones that got it. One of the big reasons that people, there aren't a lot of people that have it is the test is very difficult. Mm. So everybody can meet their criteria. Everyone can get vetted out and have a good background check come back. But then you have to study. And then there's a 200 question exam that you have to go to, to a testing site. I went into Boston and took mine. And I, it's about a 30% failure rate on that test. Oh, wow. And that's why, I mean, we don't want 50,000 CRMPs because then seniors will be like, oh yeah, there's 50 of them in Massachusetts. Why, you know, so it's just really a way to provide um, a pool of professionals, the gold standard in our industry for folks to go to. Right. And being able to have that vetting ultimately with being able to know that the people that they are connecting with, with that handful really says a lot overall. Yeah, we, it's an annual vetting too. So, I mean, it's not something that when I passed that test, it wasn't like, oh, I got this forever. So if I have problems this year, if I get pulled over for drinking and driving or um, I'm, a, I'm a felon, I, you know, a criminal or something like that, and I file for bankruptcy and it's unresolved, they won't issue me my CRMP until things are cleaned up. Mm. So it's really, to me, it's really more of a way for a consumer who's 62 and older they can go to these CRMPs and know that someone, that person who's coming in their house has been looked at annually. You know, they mean, they're passionate about what they do, which is why they got the designation. Absolutely. And we might potentially end up having listeners on the show who are loan officers for traditional mortgages, but after listening to this conversation, might be thinking about making the switch to becoming a CRMP. So is there any advice that you would give for someone like that who is currently in the industry, but may want to switch what they're doing to work with this demographic? Yeah. So you're talking about just traditional loan officers that might be coming on the show and they don't do reverses at the moment and maybe considering that or someone who does reverses. Okay. Yeah. So, and that's really, that's a good question, Ashley, because a lot of people right now with rates being in the sixes and um, so refinances are dried up for traditional mortgage. No one's going to refinance from 4% to six and a half. That wouldn't make any sense. Right. So those are dried up. And now the buyers that are out there, there's plenty of buyers, but not all those buyers can afford that new mortgage payment at six and a half percent. They were pre-qualified a year and a half ago at, in the high threes. So those loan officers that were pre-qualifying all those buyers are looking at diff- down different alleys, so to speak. What, where else can I gain new business? You know, I, Maybe I should learn about reverse mortgages. And you can do that if you're a traditional forward mortgage loan officer, it, it's uh, there's a lot of moving parts to reverse mortgages. I will say that that's why I do it only. There's um, many variables to consider. So if you're going to get into it, one of the questions I would ask myself if I was a loan officer doing traditional mortgages is how do I feel about working with people only 62 and older? That's a key question. Right. Not everybody wants to work with retirees. I happen to like it. I like that generation. Um, that's one key question, because if you, if you answer no to that question, it makes no sense to go learn about something you're not going to be passionate about because exactly. that will shine through, right? I mean, you can't hide that when you're sitting down with families and you're not really keen about working with older folks. So that's one question. The other one is they, they really have to dedicate a lot of time to learn this, this, this product. Mm. And so they have to put, put aside time that may, they may or may not have to attend many, many webinars and get up to speed on this. And then they have to go to work with a company that has the infrastructure in place for processors that know how to do um, reverse mortgages. So there's a lot to think about. It's not, it's not like, you know, if you do regular mortgages and you want to do home equity lines, you can kind of learn about that in a few hours. It's just, but I don't want to steer people away from it. It's, it's very fulfilling. Mm. It's very it's very nichey. There's not a lot of us doing it. So it kind of, for me, it's a key differentiator uh, right. in my eyes, because when I go out, I'm not one of tens of thousands of loan officers out there. I'm one of, you know, a handful of CRMPs in Massachusetts. And it just isn't a lot of us doing it. 
So it's definitely worth looking into, but they really have to, they can't just look into it because they don't have enough volume right now from traditional mortgages. They have to look at it differently and say, is this really something I, I've been kind of interested about and maybe I want to dive into it, jump into the deep end and learn about it. Don't just jump in because you're looking for a way to supplement your volume because I don't think that that will work out. I've seen forward loan officers get into it and say, ah, it's just not for me. It's too complicated. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't discourage them from learning it, but um, maybe just talk to someone who's in the business and say, hey, let yeah. me pick your brain for 15 minutes. And I wouldn't mind talking to someone, you know, I can, I don't mind taking time to help someone out. And uh, if I might say something, they might say, ah, oh, forget it. I'm glad I talked to you. They might say, oh, that sounds right. very interesting. Maybe yeah. I will do that. Um, I'm already working with financial planners or elder law attorneys. I can kind of utilize my same referral partner base and just learn about this product. But it, there's, there are a lot of moving parts. There's a lot to know. Um, it's not rocket science, you know, it's a mortgage at the end of the day, but it's, it's just different, you know, everything kind of works backwards, hence the name yeah. reverse. <laughs> it's a mortgage, but it works backwards. The mortgage balance goes up instead of a regular mortgage balance goes down. The bank pays you money from the mortgage instead of you paying the mortgage back. So mm -hmm. everything just kind of flip is flipped backwards. Yes. Definitely. And you've mentioned a few times uh, the process of having a referral network. And I'm glad that you mentioned that because that was actually one of the questions I wrote down that I wanted to ask you about, with the point being that you have a vast referral network of all of these different professionals who share the same clientele as you, who can send you clients and vice versa. And so as business owners, that's something that's huge for being able to excel your careers, being able to have people in your network who can almost do the sales for you ultimately by yeah. sending you people who are a great fit. And so for someone who is kind of starting out in their business or fairly new and doesn't really have a referral network yet, what would you say is good advice for them to get started with that in terms of how to find people who could be referral partners, how to build those relationships, and most importantly, make sure it's mutually beneficial? Yeah, great question. So, so the first thing to note is that Anyone who's taking out a reverse mortgage is age 62 or older. So the key thing is you say, okay, where do those people hang out? Or who services those people, that age group? And so, you know, they're at that, at that age, they're thinking about estate planning, mm -hmm. get my will in place, a health proxy, a durable power of attorney, a trust maybe for the stuff I own. So it passes on to my children. So, you know, then you're thinking a referral partner there could be an elder law attorney right? Someone who works with seniors already. Uh, certified financial planners. You notice I said certified financial planners um, and financial planners that charge a fee, not get paid commissions on products that they sell specifically. Mm -hmm. And the reason I say that, that's one of the things I learned, Ashley, when I got in the business, I would sit down with every financial advisor and some work for just a specific company. So they were only selling those products within a specific company. But the true financial planners out there, in my opinion, is you take a bunch of money, give it to someone you trust, and they can invest it anywhere. But they charge mm -hmm. up to like a 1% fee on whatever your principal balance is every year, and they just take it off the top. So that's someone who really you, you know, takes their clients and provides a true financial plan. So they would understand uh, how a reverse mortgage would help their clients portfolio last longer. So a certified financial planner, an LLR attorney, um, CPAs, maybe a mm. CPA who's been in the business a long time and they've had clients from their thirties to now sixties where they would get that. Uh, speaking, you know, get out there and let people know what you do. I speak a lot at senior centers Council on Aging. Every town has a COA, a Council on Aging. And that's where seniors can go and get, you know, questions answered um, about various things in this stage in their life. Uh, they can go to seminars there. Maybe an elder law attorney speaks there, a financial planner. I speak there. It's mm -hmm. very cost effective, right? So you just have to get in the door. Uh, there's vetting going on there as well. So you speak to the director and they they ask for reference letters and things like that. And eventually they say, yeah, I'd like to have you come in and lecture on reverse mortgages. So speaking, uh, radio spots have always worked good for me. And 
you know, you partner up with, I, I'm partnered with a, um, a financial planning practice that has a radio show and they've had one for 30 years and they have me on their show a couple of times a year. I do radio advertising. Um, Got to remember that, you know, social media is really the new age radio advertising. And we all know that. And I get that. But you're still dealing with people age 62 and older. Right. Now, when I'm 62, it's going to be different then. Maybe radio ads aren't going to be the way to go. It's going to be whatever platforms are available. So right now that works for me. You know, you're basically building a reputation in the area you live. And we're, we're yeah. pretty lucky where I live in Situate, there's a radio station on, F on the FM dial, WATD, you're familiar with it, 95.9. It's been there for 40 plus years. So a lot of local people listen to that and I'm local. So I've been on that station now for about five years advertising. So it's interesting because you know how you you talk to me a lot about Dave. You know, social media is a marathon. You have to build mm -hmm. trust. You can't send out two posts, you know, in your first month and expect people to say, "I'm going to buy from this person." You have to provide quality content over right. a period of time and then build up some trust and you know, be interesting, so that people say, "Oh, this guy's been, you know, posting things about things he cooks." maybe his cat here and there. And then, oh, he does reverse mortgages, you know? So then exactly. th that's, it's really just building. In my industry, it's a marathon too, because you got to build trust with age people, 62 and older. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I would just say, get out there and speak and work hard and, you know, become really good at your craft. That's one of the biggest things I'll say to anybody. I, I always go back to Tom Brady. I wouldn't say that he looks like an amazing athlete when I see him run, but he studies video and he became, if not the best quarterback of all time, because he studied, practiced, and just desired to be the very best. So if you get into this industry, that's kind of the way I conduct myself is I'm not too you know, proud to throw on a podcast on the way here on Reverse Mortgage 101. Right. Because sometimes people will say words or phrases that I said, oh, I like how he said that. So you just always have to be studying the business you're in. Um, so get good at it. And then when you're out there visiting with those potential referral partners, they'll see a lot of value in you because they say this person knows their stuff. So I feel comfortable speaking to them. And then the next step, obviously, is you have a couple of transactions, reciprocity going back and forth, and then it's cemented. So yeah, definitely. And with those partners, did that originally get started because you reached out to them to have like a one on one meeting and get to know one another? Was it that you met them at networking events or maybe even a mix of both? Mix of both. Yeah. When I first started, I, I there was there's a few senior groups out there that just serve as seniors. I was going to those you know, even cold calling. You know, you go online and you do uh, CFPs near me. And you, you see, oh, this is guy Joe over in Marshfield. He's a CFPA. Back then, we used to pick the phone up and call. <laughs> Nowadays, you can email or message them through LinkedIn or Facebook. Yep. However, you know what the best method is. And back then, we used to sit down kneecap to kneecap over Panera Bread or somewhere and have coffee and tea and meet each other. Now you can do that via Zoom. So it's right. It's uh, you can do it on a conference call. You can do it on a simple phone call. And so everybody's trying to, including me, we're all trying to figure out ways to be more efficient. Mm -hmm. And it's still good to meet people face to face because you just have to do that still. But uh, you right. can start off with a phone call and feel each other out. But initially, yeah, it was just, I was always reaching out to real estate agents, financial planners, CPAs, reaching out to, I would spend a day reaching out to all the directors mm -hmm. at the COAs. You know, on the phone, you might get hung up on here and there. That's just the way it goes, right? And then some might say, yeah, that sounds interesting to me. So you just always have to keep planting seeds. You know, that old adage, keep planting seeds, even when, even when you're busy, yep. keep planting seeds. And that garden's always got seeds in it. And there's always things growing, even from maybe you planted a few seeds a few years ago with a elder law attorney, and they've seen a few posts, and all of a sudden they call and say, hey, I'd like to work with you. Um, so it's always a 
you just have to be consistent. I would say right. one of the things that if people are consistent, committed, and passionate about what they're doing, I think you can pretty much, you can make a lot of money selling pens or pencils or anything mm -hmm. if you're passionate, committed, and consistent about it. Right. Um, so I just think you have to like, you have to love what you do and then everything else will kind of work around that. Yep, absolutely. And you had a quote that I want to reiterate because I think it's so true and something that I firmly believe in. And what you had said was keep planting seeds even when you're busy, because being in marketing, that's what I hear from people all the time is that they're so busy that they don't want to do marketing because they don't have the time for it. But then right. when things happen, whether it's a recession or seasonality or whatever it may be, and things are slow, they're kicking themselves because they did not market during the times that they should have. And now they have a dry lead pipe or whatever it may be. They don't have any yeah. leads coming in. Yeah. Um, so I just wanted to say that I agree with you and I'm a proud marketer for you as one of my yeah. clients that you feel that way. <laughs> yeah, I'm proud to be partnered with you too, Ashley. You're great. And, um, you know, it's kind of great. We work on the content, you know, obviously it's, it's a kind of a, a funky product that you got to learn about. Um, uh, but we've, we've kind of, I think we've been together now almost a year. I think yeah. next August will be a year. Yeah. No, and you, you do a great job and, you know, I'll, I'll refer you to anybody. I've mentioned your name to many people. So, um, you do a great job. You're really good at what you do and you're passionate. So that's what it takes. You know, the, one right. of the other things too, is that, I don't know, maybe you told me this or it was in a book is that when you're part of always building your network could be as simple as when you're sitting down, like I was last, last night watching the hockey game, mm -hmm. Colorado and Tampa, you can just, just go into your Facebook and add, you know, 10 new friends, friend yeah. request 10 new people. Absolutely. And if they accept, don't just let them accept, just send them a quick message and have, don't have it be too boilerplate. Just say, Hey, nice connecting with you, Ashley. Um, you know, if you ever have any questions about reverse mortgages, you know, I do these and exclusively and have been for 17 years, happy to be a resource. Mm -hmm. Talk soon, something like that. So Definitely. I, you'd be surprised how many people actually send back a, you know, a reply with, Hey, thanks. You know, I've, I've heard about those things. It sounds really good. And next thing, you know, they're asking me, Oh, I work for this real estate company. We do a, a monthly, um, we have a speaker come in monthly that be great for you to come in and talk to us about how to buy a house with a reverse mortgage. So it's mm -hmm. funny how things work, you know, so just a quick, and you're sitting down anyway. So you have your phone in your hand. Most people do. I try to, I don't have it in my hand every night because of some nights I don't want it in my hand. <laughs> but you're always building. If you just keep building your friends and Instagram and send out things interesting, you know, you're doing all my social media for me and you're deploying everything, but I'm trying to do little fillers in between too, by building the right. groups and sending out pictures of my cat or a sunrise or just something that I think is interesting. You know, I, absolutely. I, I, I try and think of, the person that's going to get that, would I open it and say, hey, that's beautiful or something mm -hmm. like that. So, Yep, exactly. Because that's one of the most important things about marketing is that you can sell yourself without actually talking about what you sell. It's just right. being able to build awareness in front of people and show them who you are and your personality, because that's what builds that relationship, which is at the core of your business, really building relationships and having that trust. Yeah. And I've seen, you know, I've seen a few of your posts where as you go, as I'm reading through them, there's lots of great information in there. It's like, wow, I'm getting all this free information, you know? So to your point, and you want to do that, right? And so right. I know that's not a tactic of yours. I just know that's how you are. Hey, I want to help you. I mean, whether you ever call me or not, Hey, here's some tips. Mm -hmm. But if you keep giving in life, you just can't lose. I don't exactly. care how much you might, some people think oh, I give too much. I devote too much time. I never can say no. I, I just feel like, you know, of course, we all have to be smart with our time, right? We all have right. to do that. But helping someone go with your gut, um, throw out some information that you think might be valuable to people. And that in and of itself is going to help you in your career. There's just no way it can't. But if you're always just sending out posts about me, 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 I'm here, I'm there, I'm going here, me, me, me. Of course, we all do that because people want to know that side of you too. They want to know you mm -hmm. personally a little bit. But um, 
I'm always trying to think of ways to, if I'm on the other side getting it, is it interesting? Yep. So if, if, am I just a resource? And I really just, I go into it as a resource, um, not a salesperson. Hey, use me if you ever have a reverse mortgage. I just want to be that person that, hey, the information I'm getting from this individual has been valuable. And now my aunt's looking into a reverse. I was at a cookout and I say, I know just the person. Mm-hmm. So um, not to beat a dead horse, but I think you and I are on the same page in that regard. Absolutely. And while we've been on the topic of referrals, I'm curious to hear what your favorite local businesses are. If you want to do a shout out, it doesn't have to be any of your referral partners, but of course it can be, but it can even be something like your favorite local ice cream shop or just the stores that you like to frequent and that are kind of like that mom and pop type of deal. Yeah, I'm a health nut, you know, kind of a health nut. So everything's probably going to wrap around food here. I mean, I'm going to give a shout out to you. And I know this is you know, I, because we've been working together for a year and I just think you, you do a great job. And, um, and I, and I think you're fair. I think your pricing is fair because I've seen others that, you know, maybe do these flashy, amazing looking videos, but I don't think you have to do that. So quick shout out to you. And that's from the heart. That's not because you're having me on here interviewing. Thank you, Dave. I um, appreciate that. But it's getting back to where I like to go. Well, I'm kind of boring. So, I mean, if I get an ice cream, <laughs> I like to go to Far Fars in Duxbury, one of my favorites. Um, I love Thai food. So my all time mm. favorite right now at the moment is Anchin Restaurant in Braintree. Um, where do I get my health stuff, my food? Well, I have get it most of it at Whole Foods, but I like the little mom and pop shop in Hanover Good Health. It's mm-hmm. kind of a smaller health uh, store. You've probably been there, I'm guessing, if yep. you have or haven't. Uh, businesses. I mean, that, I mean, that, uh, on the top of my head, that's really all that stands out to me because I'm kind of a boring guy in that regard. Um, so all yeah, good. really no other shout outs. I mean, <laughs> you know, I have a lot of referral partners, but they're more service related, you know, right. them out of financial, you know, they've been one of my financial planning partners for a long time. They've been very good to me. I love how they deal with their customers. You know, they're in Marshfield. They're the, they're the financial planning firm that I that invite me on. They've, they've had mm-hmm. a radio show now for 32 years on WATD every single Saturday. And I like them because when they're on there for two hours, they're really giving all kinds of free information. Right. They're not trying to sell themselves, but like you and I were just talking about, in doing that, they've built an enormous practice. You know, Absolutely. they have a lot of clients. I refer clients to them. They refer clients to me. They're, they're just an ideal referral partner. They've always been great. Um, so that's one of them. I'm, you know, I'll give a shout out to one of my attorneys, Paula Slosser. She's a, an elder law attorney and a, a reverse mortgage, I'm sorry, a, a real estate attorney. So she does two things, real estate and elder law. Mm-hmm. And it works well for me. And I met Paula maybe eight, eight or nine years ago. She has her own law office in West Bridgewater on Route 106. She, what I like about Paula, she's extremely efficient and never have to worry about my transactions funding or not. And the fact that she does both things, she does my real reverse mortgage closings and she can assist with estate planning, you know, directives and documents for my clients. And the biggest thing is just, I trust her. I don't have to worry about a phone call. Hey, you sent this me to this person. They were horrible. They never call me back. So those are two that stand out in my head from my referral partners. There's many others, but I don't want to make the whole interview about that. (laughs) Awesome. Well, Dave, this has been such a great episode and I really enjoyed having you on the show. And for our listeners who would like to connect with you further, please feel free to share where they can find you online. Yeah. So any of the, uh, you can find me on Facebook. Uh, Website is uh, homesteadreversemortgages.com. That's plural, homesteadreversemortgages.com. I'm on Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook. Um, the old-fashioned way is my, my the best telephone number is 617-797-3277. And email address is dave at myhomesteadmortgage.com. But if you just go to homesteadreversemortgages.com, everything's there as well. Perfect. And I will link to those in the show notes. So that way, in case anyone missed them, they can click through and connect with you from there. But Dave, thank you so much again for coming on the show. Thanks, Ashley. Thanks for having me. Have a great summer.